HFS 490 has four full 32-bit frame stores that can be used for still images or clips. The unique thing about these frame stores is that they have the ability to store alpha channel as well as video channel. So in this switcher, you can store the clip with alpha using a single frame store. In addition, all of the inputs on the switcher can hold uh, video clips. In addition, all of the inputs on the switcher can hold video stills as well. So any unused inputs can be used as still stores. To operate the still stores, we use the file menu and load type still. We select the uh, still from the uh, SD card and load it into the system. So now we have input 31 is no longer a video source, it's now a still source. Or in the case of a uh, still store, we can load that as well. So the still types that we can accept are bitmap, JPEGs, targets, and now PNGs. You'll see here my input still and my four still stores. So on still three, oops, still store. On still three, I can capture off air as well. I have my video or fill as uh, ME1 program and my key source is also ME1 program at the moment. And so to capture on air, I simply tap the camera button and it will grab the uh, still coming off of the bus that you've selected. So I've used my still stores for a lot of purposes. Um, I can have uh, still images, I can have images with Targa. You see here I've got some video clips running. In the still menu, I define still one, two, three, and four as either a still or a clip. So there is still one playing a, a looping target sequence, so as well as still two or still three. So if we look here on the display for the uh, uh, web browser, you can see our stills running here. Still one is playing. It's running a 60 sequence, or 60, uh, sorry. Still one is playing, and it's playing a 60 frame sequence. The system is capable of storing eight gigabyte of uh, clip and still images, and that equals a uh, about 900 frames in 1080i, uh, significantly more in 720p. It's uh, dependent on the frame rate. So we can stop that playing. You can see it's stopped. I can increment through the image. I can play it. I can loop it or not loop it. So you can use this feature to store uh, motion bugs uh, as well as uh, using it as the basis for CG wipes. The HVS 490 has several types of memory system. The most commonly used is the event memory. Event memory has 100 event registers. In addition, we have uh, macro memory and sequence memory and direct pattern memory for holding white patterns and DVE patterns. So to store into any of these memories is a similar operation. So I select event memory. I start the process by enter. 
And on my screen, I see all the available levels in the switcher that can be stored. It's ME1, ME2, flexi keys, auxiliary buses, chroma keys, sub effects, color correctors, and multi viewers. So they can all be stored individually or in concert with one another. So perhaps I use an event register to set up the initial operating configuration of the switcher. Then in my uh, setup system initialize, I say startup event is number 22. So now when you power on the switcher, number 22 will be recalled as your opening position. So we have ME1 selected as the layer that we want to store. So we have LEM ME1 background. Uh, we have uh, uh, ME1 background, ME1 preset, ME1 background data. So the preset and program selection are the cross points for video. The background data is whether it's a mix or a wipe, what the transition rate is, how the layers are set. Then we have the keyers, four keyers, and each of these keyers then has data and cross point as well. So I have a keyer four here uh, that has that video inside. So if I store the keyer data, I store the fact that it's a picture in picture and it's that size and it has that border. Then if I store the cross point information, I add to that the cross point that's being used. So I could save a key in event memory as a template with no particular video input. And then when I recall it, I can add whatever video I want. So let's save that one. We have 10 pages. So we'll save this one in, uh, in this entry here. And now that's saved. So just to demonstrate what we want to do, let's take and move that um, key four image, position that, we'll move it down here, and we'll make it much smaller. So we go back into our store. The, we're using the same layering and in my menu I can set the preference of what layers I want to use. So here is my layering that I want to use and I have a duration here of 30. So we'll save this position. Now when I recall my positions here, the previous position, it goes to there, and eight, and it goes to there. So I'm creating single keyframes that I can use. So I went to there, and we'll go ahead and do one more. So we'll bring it over here. We'll save this one. And so now we can step through here, to here, to here. Right. So that gives us a, uh, an event with transitions. Another switcher memory are macros. So macros are button pushes. So just to demonstrate very quickly, I select macros and I start recording a macro and uh, let's just uh, walk down the program bus. I stop recording macros and I save it to button 19. So now I've got a macro here on button 19. When I push button 19, it's going to walk the bus. So now when I go to macro 18, uh, it walks down the bus. Now, we give you the ability to edit these macros after you've created them. As we see here, 
on our web interface. Uh, this macro 18 has uh, seven steps in it. And each step is about 31 frames long, but it's recorded at whatever speed I use to push the button. So if I had one that was became too long or too short, I can go ahead and add that in and change that. I can also delete any uh, macro step that I don't want to keep. Um, I can play the macro from here. I can come to my item list and I can create a new item that, like a background transition in auto, uh, and if I select this second position here and I uh, add that action, so now I put in an auto trans into my macro and when I play it this time there'll be a transition occur as part of the macro. So you can edit macros completely once they're created by using our macro editing system. So we might use a macro for something a little more useful. Let's uh, take our events from the previous stage and we'll create a new macro and so this macro is going to call my event. So I've set macro to record. I go to event 7, then 8, then 9, and then 7 again. Stop my record, store the macro. So now my macro is going to play through that uh, yep. it's going to play through that. Now, the only problem with that is that I spent too much time deciding what I was going to do, which gives us an excellent chance of uh, editing that macro. You see here, in the second step of the macro, while I was thinking, uh, we ended up with a 209-frame uh, delay. So let's get that back down to our whoop, back down, sorry, back down to our 60 frames. No, no, no. Okay, so everything else is 50, 60 frames. And we can play it. So there we've chained, used a macro to chain several events together. And then to finalize that, uh, I would uh, take and uh, rename my macro. Um, macro name. Rename my macro to be maybe a picture in picture. And so now, if I look on that button, it says uh, picture in picture instead of macro number. So, so as, a, uh, as a producer now, you can have your uh, TD call up an on-screen effect by name using a macro that has connected events and other functions of the panel together. The HVS 490 generates internal signals. We generate a black, white, two mats, a gradient mat, and color bars. In color bars, I can have SMPTE, ARIB 75, ARB 100, uh, ARB black at 10%, ARB I and Q, and full SMPTE. For generated signals, I can generate a black signal, a white signal, a matte signal, and in my matte signal, I can choose any color that I want in there. So I can select my color. I can use standard preset colors. I can take a signal that I, a color that I generate, and I can 
scale it. I can rotate through color, so color, spin, saturation, luminance, range of hue. I have two mats. I also have a gradient mat. So in a gradient mat, I have color one. So color one will use this color. Color two, then for gradation, I can interject a horizontal pattern, and I can position my horizontal. I can add softness to that horizontal, all to give a uh, fixed background color or a color gradient to use behind some other item or to use in your transition background. 